Normally on Worst of the Week, we talk about the worst DC and Marvel comics we can kind of get our hands on. I thought we would do a special, a Beat Ayala special this week. New Mutants 25, somewhat of a milestone if you want to call it that. And I have seen and heard that New Mutants 25 might be the best comic book Beat Ayala has ever written. Let's put it to the test. Let's bring Doc in here. and Let's uh, let's talk about it. Obviously, he's a big X-Men fan. He's a big Marvel fan. How you doing, Doc? Oh, I hate you less this week for making me read this than I hated you two weeks ago. Today we're covering specifically an X-Men comic, Vita Ayala, Rod Reese, New Mutants 25. This is supposedly the best comic book that Vita Ayala has ever written. And I must say, Doc, I've read a better story from Vita Ayala. It was in the Wonder Woman 60th anniversary special, but it was only like six pages. This is actually, you know, 30, 35 pages, and it's not atrocious. And that is a huge step up for Vita Ayala. Is she getting better? Is there a new dawn coming for Vita Ayala and her prospects as far as comic book writing? I would go with I doubt it. I would very much press X to doubt. However, this was the least offensive Vita Ayala comic that I've ever read. Are you recommending it? Oh, fuck no. It was, it was, look, this was merely tolerable because still absolutely none of the characters had an individual voice i made me almost it made me not want to throw my phone across the room so in in, progress doc just say the word it's progress it is and i'm I'm terribly disappointed to say it because look we're gonna get right back to the same bullshit next week. We're you know on one of the other forty-seven Vita Ayala comics that comes out next week. It appears that Vita put a little bit of extra TLC on this comic book. There's problems though, Doc, because it's still meandering and it's still kind of a mess for some reason. Magic wants to give up, you know, the kingdom of Limbo, and she's gonna give it up to Maddie Pryor. We've got Wolf Spain there, Danny Moonstar. They're kind of being the voices of reason. They're like you cannot seed control of Limbo to Madeline Pryor. Last time you did that, or last time she tried to take over Limbo, she tried to merge heaven and hell, and it was a big catastrophe. We had a big event about it. That's probably a bad idea. Madeline Pryor says she's changed. And this is the weird part. It's almost as if she says, you can come along with me and object if you would like. Magic's argument against is, dude, trust me. Moonstar and Wolfsbane were making reasonable objections, pointing out very good points on why this was a terrible idea. Vita couldn't really justify it, even in the mouth, through the mouth of magic. So she just went with, dude, trust me. Yeah, it felt like this is what the story has to do, so we're going to do it. But I need these two characters there as well because they're going to go along for the adventure. You put in some logical arguments and then it just kind of goes nowhere. There's another element that's going on throughout this, and I guess it kind of makes more sense at the end. There's a fairy tale going on about this little goblin and her friend, the wolf, Wolf's Bane, and her other friend, what was she, an Indian? Yeah, she she's like a, a warrior princess. A warrior princess, obviously being Danny Moonstar, and then there's another character that kind of represents Madeline Pryor. And it's just like recapping specifically what's happening in the story in one page. And it's really off-putting. It's adding nothing to the story. And it's simply filler so they could charge more money for the comic book. It's not like those little fairy tale pages actually added anything to the story. Whatever you just read for the last four pages, we're going to recap that. One of the things that we do see is I guess on the other side of Limbo, there's some demons or whatever, and there's this guy, Sib, and there's this uh, dark character, and he's making this weird concoction with some eyeballs and stuff, and he makes him drink it. He's like, this isn't going to kill you. And out come from this guy's chest comes like a mace. Apparently, he, it's an enchanted mace. I'm guessing it's like his demonic soul, I guess, wh- whatever the hell demons have inside them in place of a soul. And his takes the form of a mace, the same way that 
Ilyana's takes the form of a sword. So you have that, and you don't know who the guy in the robes are, the guy or the girl, and of course it's, it's definitely going to end up being a woman that's that's doing this with Sim. So you know, Sim was a important character. He was an ally of Madeline Pryor back during the original uh, the in- original Inferno back in the 80s because he was trying to control Madeline, take the throne back then. Now this time it's he just directly wants the throne he's directly come into conflict with magic over the throne of limbo more times than i can count but she doesn't want to give it to him she wants to give it to madeline for whatever ridiculous reason but for he's gonna take not, it. yeah it's only for reasons and there's this mysterious guy this benefactor behind the scenes that's kind of putting the pieces in place and so they end up in limbo and she gives some weird story there's a lot of talking a lot of meandering going on at the very beginning of this. And as they're about to do the transfer of power from, from Magic over to Maddie Pryor, which makes no sense because this is a terrible idea. And everyone has said, this is a terrible idea, but but Magic herself can, uh, can't answer those things and have a good coherent reason why it's not a terrible idea. All of a sudden, this door gets kicked open. Sim has got this, uh, I don't know, enchanted mace. And all these demons come through and they start fighting. And we get this big moment. Yep. This huge moment, Iliada is going after him, and she's got the soul sword, and they go and they they go to, to clash, and this mace that popped out of this guy's chest destroys the soul sword and destroys her connection and control over Limbo itself. And theoretically, maybe destroys her soul. Vita did the thing that she's never done before, which is actually make her character's like put them through the paces and have them actually challenged magic wolfsbane and danny leave through one of magic's portals but she no longer controls limbo obviously now sim is in control so whatever deal she had with with madeline is basically off the table she needs to go and wrestle control of limbo back because sim is the one that came up with the idea to merge earth and limbo the first time around but the problem is she doesn't know where she is they could be anywhere yeah they don't know where they're at they're now in some snowy enchanted forest i'm betting that this is where their stupid little fairy tale is going i know so they do connect back to the fairy tale we see Iliada a long time ago in lambo in limbo i almost said lambo field she's reading books that she's not supposed to and uh, it was at bally Endor or is is over watching and always spying on her and apparently she's reading a fairy tale about a little goblin this is probably the best work that vita has done in her career to this point there are good elements there was good elements you know it's only taken what, like four years for her to write a competent story. I almost feel bad having this on worst of the week because it was, it's supposed to be ironic doc. It said it was the best one that she's ever written. Yeah. Because I mean, look, it was not horrible. I didn't like the ending with the fairy tale and it looks like, uh, Ileana can change her form into the form of a goblin. Is that the way you took it? Yeah, kind of, because Ileana has always had, she's had her demonic side, which is the dark child, where she has the horns and the hooves and everything. But now they're making her turn, I guess, because she lost her soul sword, she'll turn into a goblin. This happened and, before, though. This is when she was a little girl growing well, up. Yeah, and, and maybe that goblin form is going to be turn out to be the... I guess the the gestation form of the dark child demon version of her as an adult. I I don't know. I mean, maybe they're going with something interesting here. I'm actually marginally interested in seeing where this is going. Yeah, I think you're a fool. The things that don't work about this, as we said, there are good good plot elements. There are things that really work for the story, and it is somewhat intriguing. Is the dialogue is still atrocious? Oh yeah. These Nobody's- characters do not speak to each other like humans at all. They don't sound like the characters from the history of X-Men. They're just whoever Vita has decided they sound like that day. Their arguments were really bad. Uh, Magic didn't seem like herself. Madeline Pryor, I don't even know what character that was. That wasn't Maddie Pryor. No, it absolutely was not Maddie Pryor. None of these characters sounded like themselves. In fact, they all sounded exactly the same. 
like some random millennial. That's that's all it sounded like. If there was less meandering, a little bit tightening up on the dialogue and some of the script elements, get rid of the filler. I think you've got a winner here. You got a comic book that you you could recommend. I think the Rod Reese art is perfectly fine. I don't think it's spectacular, but I certainly don't think it's bad by any means. It certainly uh, fits the the um, the tone of the story and everything that they're trying to accomplish here. So the elements are there for a good comic book. Will Vida Vida be able to take this? Really, the first I don't know inclination that we've seen that there might be a good comic book writer emerging from whatever vidal has been for the past four years i'm not really sure but it could happen but i do think we are fools if we expect it to happen or even think it if there's a chance it will i i think under the stewardship of a competent of anyone in that editorial office even remotely competent this is the start that you could like there's like a seed here that you could foster and grow and water and you know prune into a competent reasonable comic book writer but we don't have that so we're just hoping that vita picks up on what she did right and what she did wrong here and not do the wrong things again and do more of the right things but she's had five years to figure this out and hasn't so i have no hope that it's going to start now interestingly enough people had said this happened quite a while ago and i think it was ten of swords where she had i think it's a marauders issue where storm ends up uh, infiltrating wakanda and stealing one of t'challa's swords almost kills his sister wipes out some people of his in his guard and stuff and decides to steal from him everyone was saying this is the best comic book ever and there was like so many holes in it you're like you guys are just kidding yourselves if you think this is the start of anything interesting this is more bad comic book writing for Vita Ayala. You're just making excuses. This is what they thought that was, except, you know, we're being realistic. It's, it's not that good. It's, no, it's, it's, it, it's perfectly fine. It was, it was almost up to generic comic book writer D level. Just pick any random comic book writer about on that level. It's no longer atrocious. It's no longer laughable. And honestly, if it wasn't, for Vita Ayala's name on the cover, I wouldn't be able to tell her, tell that it was her, which is a big improvement for her. Shockingly, Doc and I talked about that issue where Storm essentially storms Wakanda and how everyone was praising that issue from Vita Ayala. We said it was atrocious. If you want some reminders, you want some of the details of why that story absolutely sucked and pales in comparison to what we actually just read this week, the new movements, definitely check this video out. Because the proof is in the pudding. She wasn't there. She's still not there, but she might be getting there.